Welcome to Happily Ever After is just the beginning. Keeping your relationship not just together, but happy, and we mean truly happy, is part art and part science. You've come to the right place. Here's your host, Leslie Dorries. You know, I know I've talked about this before. Why I chose to call the show Happily Ever After is just the beginning. But I think it bears repeating because most love stories follow a script. Boy meets girl, often meet cute. They face some challenge or misunderstanding. They reunite and ride off into the sunset to live happily ever after, fade to black. And the next time we see them is in a bitter story about divorce. See, a marriage story, which quite frankly, I won't, but I digress. Um, the marriage itself is never examined, but this is supposedly what everyone is trying to figure out, hence the show title. But what does it actually mean? Isn't it all smooth sailing after the wedding? Yes, I can hear all you married folk laughing out there. Um, the truth is we in the marriage biz know what works. Some lucky couples figure it out on their own, but it would be so much simpler if more people were willing to access experts. And so today, as with every episode, another one of these experts, people in the know, is here to reveal more about actions to take to have a truly happily ever after. So I'm pleased to welcome back Hannah Eaton. She's a marriage and family therapist and contributor at Gottman.com. So Hannah, thanks for coming back on the show to help people understand what having a good marriage takes and the fact that it's in everybody's reach. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Leslie, for having me back on the show today. And as my listeners know, I, I look all over the place to find my experts, and I'm always reading their pieces. And you wrote a piece for Gottman.com that also appeared on the psychologytoday.com website entitled, Pursue Your Partner at Every Stage of Marriage. And so first, there are stages of marriage. Who knew? And second, isn't the saying I do enough of a commitment? Why do I have to keep working on it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Tongue in cheek, of course, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, of course. Yeah, I decided to write that piece um, while I was doing a four-part series exploring the different facets of relationships um, through dance, actually, and just drawing mm-hmm. a, a drawing a bunch of different parallels um, from dance to lessons about our relationships, in particular Mm -hmm. marriage. And this idea came through about exploring what, you know, long-term committed healthy partnerships look like. Um, In that article, I specifically followed one of the couples that my husband and I would join in group dance classes who had been married for decades um, and I just started to piece together all these different parallels that you, Leslie, and I both see in our practice a lot of these different elements of what mm-hmm. contribute to successful long-term relationships as, as well as what contributes to them falling apart. Um, so I know you mentioned this piece of stages of a marriage, mm-hmm. and I'd be glad to touch on that briefly. Sure. Um, I would say I think there are are different elements to this. So Mm -hmm. on the one hand, you know, we go through different developmental stages in life and in marriage, there can be, you know, there's the engagement and getting married and the first year, first few years. And if you choose to have children, then you're entering Mm -hmm. a very different stage of your relationship. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, Which can be a joyful time, but it can also present a lot of challenges for couples and more distance can be created, more tension can be created with new responsibilities and less time for yourself and for your marriage. And so looking at that as a phase and and even the different stages when your kids kind of get a little older or go off to school. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when they enter the teenage years, gosh, how are you navigating that as a couple? And then (laughs) when you become empty nesters, And Mm -hmm. I understand not everyone has children, um, but there are Mm -hmm. still kind of other other phases or seasons we go through in our relationships. Um, Sometimes this has to do with 
major life transitions, like getting a new job, moving to a new area, and going through just some significant personal development that can lead to certain shifts in our relationships. And if we just try to keep doing what we've been doing, it doesn't always work. So I found it really important to just explore this idea of how can we continually purposefully cultivate connection and uh, keep our relationship as good as it can possibly be amidst all of the different seasons or transitions or stages we go through. Well, and I, and I love that concept because, you know, at, at my core, I'm probably not terribly different than when my husband and I met. But I, am, but I have grown, and he has grown. And so when people say, oh, how can you stay married to the same person for your lifetime? It's like, well, in a way, you're not staying married to the same person because, like you said, there are these things that happen, and mm-hmm. you know, nothing stays static. We don't stay static. Our relationships don't stay static. And so, it, you know, I mean, there are times when my husband will hit, will will say something or do something or I'll say something or do something and we'll look at each other and go, who are you? <laughs> Where did this come from? You know? Yeah. And you would think we've been together for almost 35 years. You'd think we would know everything, but, but we don't. <laughs> sure. you know, so it's like, so mm-hmm. it, it seems to come as a surprise to people that, oh, you know, mm-hmm. my partner isn't going to stay static and neither am I. And I guess part of it is how do we, grow together instead of growing apart because that's one of the things that frequently happens in in long-term relationships is people grow apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So true. Which which kind of leads right into the next thing I wanted to talk about because, you know, in the article you address a huge bugaboo of mine, the idea that if love is real, it will always be there, no effort needed. So I'm not entirely sure if this is the unconditional love that people expect or if it's some variation of the I love you, but I'm not in love with you anymore stance. Mm. So can you elaborate a little bit on that? On, mm-hmm. you know, on that myth yeah. that, oh, if I find the right one, everything is just going to be smooth sailing and you know, if there are problems, mm-hmm. it's because I married the wrong person. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, as, as you know, Leslie, relationships require energy of us, right? They don't just happen on their own. If you think even about you know, your early months and the phase of courtship of getting together, like mm-hmm. you're spending a lot of time getting to know one another, coming together, um, thinking about one another when you're separate. Like you're putting concerted energy um, into this, this relationship um, mm-hmm. over over time it's so important for us to continue to put energy into our relationship and exploring how how can we love and serve one another better how can we connect with one another um, one of the ways that I like to think about this idea is conceptualizing love as a verb and as a noun mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes earlier in our relationships, love the noun may just kind of come naturally. It can be, um, you know, that, that time of falling in love and just feeling all of that romantic energy. Um, and it just may be there a, a little bit more naturally. Mm-hmm. But what we find is that, you know, over time, just, just love the noun doesn't always just stay on its own. We need to focus on love the verb to uh-huh. continue to cultivate um, that connection in our relationship, to, to keep the fire going, if that makes sense. Well, so, it does, yeah. and, and I love your concept of it being energy instead of work. I really hate that yeah. concept that marriage takes work, and it's like, oh, let's go plow the back 40 and 100 degree heat, 100 percent <laughs> humidity, all that stuff, like fun. You know, uh-huh. let's, let's go work at this relationship. But I love the concept yeah. of it. it. It's energy. It's attention. I mean, that's the mm-hmm. thing. When, when we first meet somebody, you know, I mean, I remember, because I'm going to date myself here, back before there were computers and Internet uh-huh. and, and cell phones and stuff, 
My husband and I were on the phone with each other every night. We didn't live in the same place. On the phone with each other every okay. night for a couple of hours. We wrote each other letters. I mean, I mean there was just like all this energy. Wow. Like you're talking about that in love, like I want to be with this person energy. And then, yeah. you know, we're with this person and it's like, oh, you again? <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> right. Of course. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it just requires that. And, you know, and, 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 it, and again, part of this is, is that if you keep doing it, it's sort of like, um, and it's funny that you talk about dancing because, because I've danced all my life, most of my life on mm-hmm. and off, and probably for the last many years. Um, I yeah. was dancing ballet and then, you know, and it was like, it, and, I, and I had stopped for a brief period and I knew that if I ever stopped again, I would never be able to get back into it. And I think marriage mm. can be, you know, relationships can be like that too, that if you just keep feeding it, giving it energy, even, mm-hmm. even at the times when there's not a whole lot of extra time, like when you have newborns or you're starting a new mm-hmm. job, or there are various areas, or somebody's ill. Right. You know, there's there's various stages where you can, you you your energy has to go other places as well. But if right. you keep some of that going, then yeah. it's like, oh, I can just pick this back up again, and I can you know I can mm-hmm. breathe life into it. I guess maybe it's a, bit, a good example would be like a fire where you know in the, yeah. like in the olden days before matches we used to like bank the fire so that we, so that it would stay mm-hmm. and we just blow on yeah. it the next day when we wanted to cook. <laughs> yes, exactly. This this whole time Leslie I've just been picturing a fire in my mind. I'm like it is the one of the best metaphors for this of like just just adding another log and add a log mm-hmm. here and there right. and just keep it going. And that's so much easier than having the fire completely die if you're not tending to it. And then you've got mm-hmm. to start from scratch again. Um, but yeah, I think it's such a good illustration. Right. And, you know, and, and sometimes, and, and I think people get caught up going back to this, I love you, I'm not in love with you thing. It's like people don't understand mm-hmm. that we can't, our bodies literally cannot stay in the in love Space for an extended period of time, it's too exhausting. You know, our bodies go, okay, mm. I need a break. <laughs> you know? um, but, sure. but again, that, that also ebbs and flows. I mean, you're talking about empty nesters. Both my kids are, you know, out of the house, off the payroll. And, you know, my mm-hmm. husband and I now have all this time again to spend with each other. And, but, we were, yeah. but we've been able to hold on to bits and pieces of that through the child-rearing years so that it mm-hmm. was relatively easy to slide into that versus, oh, my gosh, we have to, you know, because I know there's a lot of gray divorce, you know, it's, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. the empty nesters, and it's like, I, I'm done with you, <laughs> which to me mm-hmm. is so right. sad. Right, but, yeah, absolutely. I think there's a lot of research and stories around that. Of, I mean, understandably so couples just being very focused on being parents and raising these kids and getting them out of the house and maybe not spending as much time and energy on their marriage. And then when the kids leave, it's like, Whoa, who is this roommate? Who is this person that I live with now? Right. Yeah. So yeah. this is happily ever after is just the beginning on webtalkradio.net. I'm Leslie Dorries and I'm talking with fellow therapist, Hannah Eaton about ways to have a healthy marriage that lasts. And I know that people want to know what it takes, and the answer actually is fairly simple. The challenge is in actually engaging in the behaviors that will make and keep your marriage vibrant through the years. So if you want to know how to do it, I recommend that you just get in touch with me and schedule your free Create Your Happily Ever After strategy session. You can reach me by email at leslie, L-E-S-L-I, at foundationscoachingnc.com. That's F-O-U-N-D-A-T-I-O-N-S, coaching, N as in Nancy, C as in charlie.com. Or you can reach me by phone at area code 919-924-0463. Again, that's 919-924-0463. And I want to get back to Hannah and talking about what are the things that keep marriages alive and vibrant. And we were talking about this a little bit before the break where you, know, you touch on the idea that courtship isn't just for getting to marriage, but it's also about keeping it. And you're talking about this couple that you met d- dancing. So 
Can you talk about this a little bit more and what makes it so important? Not just, I mean, I guess because we were talking a little bit about energy and spending time together, but courtship actually has kind of a different, um, I don't want to say meaning, maybe a different, a different slant. Hmm. Yeah, I'd be glad to explore that a bit further. So, uh, yeah, as you know, couples tend to do a bit more of that early on of of just really pursuing one another, going on intentional dates, spending very intentional time with one another, um, really just focusing on, all right, how can we keep pursuing one another? Um, Mm -hmm. and, And over time, People naturally, you know, can get busy, um, focusing on work and careers and families and all of these different areas. Um, and, and so it's understandable that often this piece of courtship can kind of, you know, slide by the wayside and um, not have as much focus on. But what we find is that couples who keep pursuing one another, who prioritize going on dates, doing things out of the day-to-day life, Mm -hmm. like going dancing or having a little weekend getaway, even if that's, you know, just something like camping, um, doing a class together, trying novel things um, where Mm -hmm. they're creating new shared experiences are really powerful for um, keeping that flame going, so to speak. So they're, yeah, they're just, there's very powerful and highly recommended. Well, and I, and I love the concept that you're still pursuing each other um, because, you know, I, I kind of joke sometimes with my husband. It's like, oh, I decided to stay married to you today. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm even, and I joke about that, but in some cases it's really not a joke. It, it really is a choice. I am choosing mm-hmm. to stay married to my partner, which means mm-hmm. that if I want him to stay married to me, then I need to let him know that I still want to be with him, that he still is mm-hmm. important to me, and I need to know the same thing. And, you know, it's... Um, this idea that, oh, we're married, this person's always going to be there, I don't, again, I don't have to put energy or, or effort into it. And, you know, and I know that as a, as a therapist, I know that you recommend this and I recommend date nights. And it's like, okay, that's not going to the same restaurant the same night of the week at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and discussing your relationship. It's like, oh, my God, who wants to do that? Uh, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, but, right. But it is it's yeah. this idea of trying new things together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, it's you know, marriage is really interesting because I think there's a very strong desire for a lot of people in their partnership for both. Um, security and comfort and familiarity, but then also having some novel experiences and excitement and the thrill. And, you know, that's a very, a pretty clear dichotomy that can exist. Um, and often couples will kind of just focus a little bit more on the security, the comfort, the familiarity. Perhaps they have like too much going on outside of their house. And so they're just mm-hmm. like, oh, I need this. But then all of a sudden they're like, wait, where's the, the spice and the excitement and the novelty in our relationship? So proactively finding ways to cultivate that novelty and excitement um, can be really helpful. Well, and I know that um, you've probably read her stuff, but this reminds me, and if I could ever get Esther Perel on the show, I'd be like, oh, my gosh, I took the jackpot. But um, you <laughs> yeah. know, it's, 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 that's exactly what she talks about, is about this, this familiarity, but we have to keep some of the mystery and some of the, you know, um, that, that, that erotic connection, which can fall, you know, which can easily mm-hmm. fall by the wayside. And, but that's... Mm-hmm. That's what we have to find a way. And, it, and, and again, it's not that we cannot do things by ourselves because in some cases that's also what creates a little bit of mystery. What's my partner doing mm-hmm. when I'm not there? Um, mm-hmm. We don't necessarily have to be joined at the hip 24-7, but we do need mm-hmm. to be joined at the hip sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's so true. 
And, and these aren't just one-time conversations, right? Part of this idea is pursuing a partner at every stage um, is mm-hmm. that you're having these conversations continually and as things might shift. And the shifts are always as blatant as like having a child or empty nesting mm-hmm. or moving to a new state. Sometimes they're a little bit more subtle. And, you know, it's interesting. My husband and I recently had a conversation about this because we were starting to notice kind of just some like slight shifts in our relationship um, and that he's been working from home. He has Mm -hmm. remote work and then I've shifted and doing a lot of remote work at home as well. In addition to my, my clinical practice and in some ways it's really lovely because we can, you know, just go check in on each other and say hi and give each other a hug. But then there's this, this other piece of like, wait, we're like only seeing each other in the home environment and there's like not as much mystery. And then we're, mm-hmm. we're just getting like a little too comfortable. How can <laughs> we pivot and then, mm-hmm. you know, prioritize some dates where like we meet one another and we don't go there together, like, or we plan a surprise for one another. Mm-hmm. Um, or perhaps one of us is working outside of the house a little bit more so that there's just a little bit more of that. That mystery and like longing for one another, if that makes sense. So it's interesting. Yeah, sorry, um, I just I just yeah. flashed to I think it was a Yo Play commercial. It was some yeah. commercial uh-huh. where where it's like this couple and the and you know the man sitting in the dining room and the woman comes in dressed in the French maid's outfit, which of course is very cliche. And you know yeah. they're, they're doing stuff and and, and, the, and one of the kids walks by with one of their friends and goes, oh my parents, they're just so weird. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, my kids will look at that commercial and they look at me and I say, this is my drill business. But I mean, but it is uh-huh. part of that, and I yeah. think that's one of the yeah. things that you know, you know, like like pretending you don't know each other and you're meeting at a bar, or you just there's a way to be playful about this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so true, and it's not that one is better than another, right? Like the familiarity uh-huh. and security and comfort that we find in our marriage and at home is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And yet when it's just the only thing we focus on, um, you know, we can be lacking other areas. So it's finding that balance. It's finding harmony between these different needs that we have um, to mm-hmm. just to continue to breathe that fresh life into the relationship. Well, then it's sort of like, and although my husband would disagree because he could, he could actually eat the same, he says he could eat the same thing every day forever. And be like, <laughs> uh-huh. me would be like, no, I, I can't. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like, it would be like, you, it would be like having the same meal all the time as opposed to, let's uh-huh. change this up. Let's spice this up a little bit. So, right. you know, I did say before that, that the steps to having a good marriage are fairly simple, but not necessarily easy, but, but they're fairly simple. So what makes it so difficult for so many people to, is it just because they don't, no, or because, like we've been talking about, they they fall into habits and they're and they're comfortable because human beings like to be comfortable. I like to be comfortable. I'm not going to lie. Um, mm-hmm. What what might make it easier for people to to do these kinds of things? Yeah, gosh, I think a, a number of things. I mean, one change can be hard for people. I think like mm-hmm. especially if you've gotten very comfortable with your rhythm and routine and your relationship. It can be challenging. I mean, personal and relational growth requires energy, of course, we've uh-huh. been talking about. Um, so that's, that's one, is it absolutely takes energy and prioritizing making those changes. I think another piece is lack of information. Uh-huh. You know, a lot of the things that I teach couples in my office or at retreats or um, different speaking events are not rocket science. <laughs> there are things like <laughs> talk about what you need in your relationship to feel loved and do it in a way where you're owning your emotions and sharing clearly what you need without criticizing or getting defensive or, or shutting down. Um, mm-hmm. There are things like share appreciations and, you know, remind your partner of, of what you love about him or her. Like, these are not crazy things to do, but the research shows just how powerful a lot of them are. Um, Mm -hmm. So empowering people, I think, with the knowledge um, of just how powerful it is to, you know, create a culture of open dialogue in your relationship, to proactively talk about what you want to create, where you want to pivot or shift, 
um, you know, what you need on a day-to-day basis. So I think the knowledge piece, um, I, I think sometimes it's a little bit more complex. Like sometimes we have, unprocessed family history or trauma <laughs> that can get in the way uh, you oh, know, yeah. where that uh. shows up in our relationships. And, and in those situations, it often can be helpful to you know, seek out the help of a therapist um, or someone who's, who's equipped to help you work through those things, gain awareness, and then kind of create some new behaviors and patterns. So I, I think it varies. But for people who kind of a decent place, um, just learning the information and then taking small action steps um, can be really powerful to just cultivating new habits. So that's largely what it is. You're cultivating habits in your marriage. Well, and, and, and that's true. And, and, being, and being very aware, I mean, of the major things that, that, that can disrupt. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, moving, getting a new job, Having a child, having you know, losing losing a family member. I mean, I mean, those are big things that it's like, oh, maybe we need to adjust. You know, our, our kids are you know empty nesters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, how do you, it's like, how do you prepare for that? You know, long before mm-hmm. it, you're taking your you know last kid off to college or wherever it is they're going. Uh, it, right. You know, and and it it. You know, and, and again, because you you and I do this professionally, and you know, um, I'm always surprised by like when pe- when I work with my clients, and they go, "Oh, that didn't take very long." I said, "No, because you actually had a lot of the a, a good foundation. You just needed mm-hmm. to tweak some stuff." And I think that that's right. one of the things that people have this idea that, especially of going to somebody like you or me, that it's going to be this horrible experience, and <laughs> you have to be broken. And it's like, Mm -hmm. no, sometimes it's just we've just disconnected a little bit and we want to reconnect. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, 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 oh, by the way, the one thing I want to tell people is sometimes if just one of you goes and you can get – only one of you needs the information. You both kind of need to implement it, but only one of you actually needs to go get the information. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, but but it is. It's it's this idea that because for something that – it, I mean, can be wonderful and also can also be awful for many people, but but you, we, they rarely start out that way. I'm not going to say that some marriages don't, because because that is a true statement. But I think I think most people get married, you know, because they love each other, they want to build a life together, and then they just don't know how to put the pieces together in a way that puts that, that creates a pretty picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. It can be pretty, pretty easy for that to happen. So sometimes just getting a little extra help from someone can go a really long ways. And it's, you know, it's typically much easier, faster, and more fun to do this when there aren't big problems. Right? Yes. (laughs) It is so much easier. And you don't waste years of just feeling like disconnected or resentful of your partner. It's like, all right, let's go in, get a chiropractic marital adjustment, get back on track. And if we need to do that again next year in a few years, great, let's do it. Yeah, um, I love it. I, I, I'm a big fan of, of telling my clients, it's like, okay, you know how like businesses at the end of the year kind of take a look at what have we done well, what we have to set goals for the next year. You know, I said, I think couples ought to do that. It's like what's gone really well this year where have maybe we struggled, what do we want to do about it? And, again, if you make that a habit, mm-hmm. then it's not like you've got 10 years of stuff piled up that you don't have to spew out all the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, my husband and I recently, we were celebrating our anniversary this past fall, and we took time of, like, all right, let's, let's take some serious time to review how the past um, year and, you know, a few years have gone or, and where do we want to go? And just kind mm-hmm. of doing this like big evaluation. And it was so helpful and really fun. I mean, we did it on vacation too and mm-hmm. just had space to have some really meaningful dialogues. It's something else that I recommend to pretty much every couple I talk to is doing that kind of thing, but on a weekly basis. Yes. 
of doing like, you know, a weekly check-in of like, all right, how did the past week go? How did we love and support one another? And where did we maybe miss one another? And what can we do in the next week to proactively support one another um, as individuals and in, in the marriage? And it's like when you're just getting in the habit of doing that weekly, you can just stay on top of things and, um, you know, make it as good as it can be in the present moment. Right, right, because, you know, because, again, if, if we know what course we're on, if we're checking in all the time, then it's a lot easier to course correct then. It's like, oh, we're not paying attention, and suddenly we're, like, you know, we, we want to be in England, and we're hitting the coast of Africa. It's like, how did we get there? Yeah. It's like, we're <laughs> yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Hannah, thank yeah. you so, so much for all this great information. Can you tell people where they can find the other parts of the series and other information that you write? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Yep, you can find other articles on Gottman.com for any handful of articles there. You can also find them on my business website, which is Sequoia, like the tree, immersions.com. And I have a number of other articles there as well as just information about how I work with couples in private practice and the therapy setting, as well as leading immersive outdoor retreats. Ooh, that sounds like a whole lot of fun. Um, yeah. So ha- having a successful marriage does not have to be left to chance. It doesn't require a leap of faith either. What it needs is care, attention, and the willingness to learn effective relationship skills. And there are lots of people willing to help, but the first step is up to you. And I know you're already taking that step because one of the things you're doing is listening to this show. And I thank you very much for that. So until next week, stay loving. Stay loving.